Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to episode two of Adventures in Time, a short series where we're getting to know the Bastille Time Plus, a stereo delay device. In episode one, we looked at how we could use Time Plus just to do some really nice stereo delays, some echoes full of movement and texture, because, you know, delay makes everything better. Today we're going to take a look at how we can use time to take something somewhat static, like a drone, and use time to introduce texture and movement and actually completely transform something beyond where the input began. And we'll get to that in just a moment, but first of all, in the interests of transparency, Bastel sent the Time Plus over to me for free in order to make videos about it. I haven't otherwise been paid, and they've also not asked for any oversight into the videos that I make. So, uh, let's get droning. So I'll just start with the most basic kind of basey drawing, so it'll give us a good place to work out some of our controls here. And if I turn up the dry wet control here, so we can hear some of time, well, you'll kind of hear nothing happening at the moment because it's kind of a more or less static drone happening. But if we start to move our course control around, moving that virtual playhead around, we can kind of hear it introducing some interesting movement kind of a rippling as we move essentially time traveling I guess and that's certainly a texture that we're going to introduce a little bit later but the place I want to go first is actually the tape speed and I want to start by bringing that tape speed down as I do that you'll hear we get that that pitch bend but what I'm interested in initially it's just to bring this tape speed down low enough that we start to introduce some of that aliasing and that sort of digital glitter while everything restabilizes that's introduced some interesting texture up at that top end there already Now I also want to get some of this pitch, yeah, there we go, when it does those high notes, really beautiful. Now I want to get uh, some of that pitch movement in here as well. So let's apply a robot to the tape speed here, so hold on robot, give it a little wiggle. Uh, I'm going to set the robot to go just positive, so um, selecting uh, that selection here, and I'm going to go to the stepped triangle wave shape here and if I turn up the uh, mount here a little bit you can hear that sort of stepping uh, being introduced there to the time as we change the tape speed now I want to try and set this to be more or less an octave range uh, and that's gonna be easy to do if we start with just a square wave now look what we can do for a square wave here um, is on the step triangle, the shape control, which you get by holding robot and turning the rate. You can see here from the light that we're now just sort of on and off. So what the shape does for the step triangle is reduce the resolution, reduce how many steps there are. And at the far end, we just get a uh, square wave. Now finding where this octave jump is, is somewhat of an inexact science. Uh, it's somewhere around the middle of the knob, I think. So let's just see if we can find it. If there's a cut in the video, no, it took longer than I hoped. Okay, I think I found it. More or less. Might need fine-tuning a little bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into stereo so that our 
two sides of our stereo is going to be shifting in opposition to each other, which is going to give us a lovely bit of widening. More or less there. And if we wanted to now, we could introduce a couple of extra steps, perhaps. And bring that right down. Something like that, perhaps. And let's also introduce some of this additional texture we're getting from moving our course control around. So, uh, robot here for the course. Probably just a triangle. Nice and slow. introduce some more movement Let's get some tonal movement in here as well. We've got our filter that sits within the feedback. I thought maybe we could use this almost percussively. So let's put another robot on the go here. And let's make use of the sawtooth here and just go negative, so we're always shifting down or towards the low pass. if we send that stereo. Perhaps we need bipolar to really hear that. I can probably just stay in mono, I think. control here will bring up those additional playback heads. I 
let's get this space and control moving around as well. from where we currently are. Slow down that filter sweep. At this point we can probably go 100% wet pretty much just hear what's going on inside time. I've got a reverb pedal up here, let's um, bring that in as well. thing here is that we can actually use the freeze here to trap what's currently in the buffer. All of the modulation is still going to happen to it, but what's inside the buffer is kind of staying, it's going to stay in there now. can set something up just to pop it into the buffer. inside there. more feedback.
get the feedback going in positive feedback mode so things get a little less controlled. I've shown you how utterly transformative time could be on something that is fairly static. Because you have all of these different robots moving things around in different ways. The width of the movement within some of the controls is really, really very, very wide. And you introduce all of this texture even without the robots by moving around especially these two controls and of course the filter as well can gives you more color as well but it's yeah it's not a normal delay device i can't think of another delay that I've come across that you could kind of get to this utterly transformative space. Well, this was a slightly weirder one. Uh, I think we're going to do some beats and some glitchy stuff in the next video. Uh, so that's something to um, prepare yourselves for. Um, But, um, until next time, take care.